Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 2D Platformer tutorial series. In this video, we are going to actually be starting up. We're going to be getting the core essential pieces in place so that after this video, in theory, we could work on whatever you want. We could work on the code, we could work on the graphics, we could work on the sound, we could work on the music, we could work on whatever. So yeah, that's the idea. Just get the core essential piece in place to do whatever we need to do. But first, there's something I should mention. In the last video, I said I wasn't going to do the fourth step of taking all the planning we'd done and create a step-by-step -step list of everything we need to do to make the, the finished game. I changed my mind. I went ahead and did that, partially to show you how it's done and partially because it's just plain useful. So yeah, I've pretty much divided the uh, thing into five sections, starting up, code, graphics, sound levels, and music. Okay, I guess that's six, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Actually, is it six? Yeah, it's six. So yeah, I, I divided into those sections, and pretty much from there I went and looked at our, well, our two section things, our game elements list, and our specification, for lack of a better term, and just went on through. Okay, what do I need to code this part of the specification? What do I need to code this part of the, the game elements? And just went on and created a big list of that. And that's how I did the coding stuff. And same thing with the graphics. What, do, what graphics will I need for this game element to work? What graphics, what graphics do I need to create for this part of the specification to work? And that's how I created up, well, created the graphics list. And I plan to do similar things for the sound levels and music. So there you go, there's that. But like I said, today we're focusing on starting up. This is what we need to do to pretty much make it work. So we're going to be doing, well, three things. We're going to be making the graphics for a, just a basic test level. We're going to be drawing that. We're going to be drawing some, some basic graphics for, like, players and maybe a few other things. Just, there'll be temporary stuff, just basic things so we can, well, so we can see something. And finally, we're going to be writing the code to get the engine up and running. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Now, one final thing I'd like to mention before we get started. I'm going to be posting everything we do on GitHub in increments, and I'll be leaving links to those parts in the video description. And so, that means you can follow this series pretty much however you like. Let's say, for example, let's say you're only interested in the code. You only want to know how to code a game, and you don't care about how the graphics are created, or how the sounds, or levels, or anything else is done. You just care about the code. You can follow a series like that, because everything's on GitHub. You can just download the graphics, sounds, and levels off of GitHub, and just follow along with the coding part. Or if you're just interested in the graphics for us, you only want to know how to make the graphics for a game, and you don't care about the code or the sounds or anything else. You can download the code, the sounds, the levels, everything except the graphics from GitHub, and then just create the graphics yourself. So, you can sort of follow the series however you like. You can follow along with just the parts you're interested in. And to make that a little bit easier for you, in the video description, I'm going to be putting what sort of part each time tag is about. So, for example, the next time tag, where we start making the test level, that's part of the level thing. So I'm going to be putting the level tag next to that. So if you're only interested in the levels part, you can, well, you know what to look for. And hopefully that'll make this pretty easy. You can just go to the video, see what parts you're interested in, go to only those parts. And there you go. So with that, now let's actually begin. So, how do we make a test level? Well, if you remember, we actually specified how a level is created in our 2D platform specification. So a level is just an image with, where the red, green, and blue values mean something special. So this will be sort of our reference and guide. R is data index, G is flags, and B is entity type. So let's create a new graphic. Create a new image. It's going to make make our level 256 by 256. Keep in mind, in the level, a pixel is correlates to one tile, one entity, so 256 by 256 tiles, I think, is a good size for a level. 
And now I'm going to clear the background to black. So, red is data index. I don't really care about that right now because we don't have really any data to index, so that's irrelevant. Flags. Only part of this we care about is whether it blocks or not. So for green, I'm going to set my green... First off, I'm going to flip this so I keep black around. We're going to say black means nothing. So R is 0, we don't care about that. Green, I'm going to set to 128. I'm going to say if the green value is above 128, that means it's blocking. If it's less than 128, that means it's non-blocking. Well, 128 or above, I should say. And finally, we need the entity type. I'm going to say, just for the time being, type 1 is a wall. So I'm going to zoom in somewhere, and I'm just going to draw a sort of box. Sure. And here, let's cut out a hole in there. Let's just, well, probably need stairs or something. Sure. I just, as you can probably tell, I'm just sort of screwing around here. I'm drawing shapes. And we can have a little hole there. Why not? A couple platforms. And sure, let's make it loop back in on itself. So there. And what do you know, we have a test level. And I'll block that off, why not? Here, I'll use a bucket tool to fill that in. There we go, we got a test level. And just to make sure the player can get up there. There, so in theory the player should be able to jump on these tiles, and I'll put one more right there, just to be sure he can make it. I'll put one right there, actually. There. So there, we have a test level set up. We're, we're done. Pretty much. Now we need to specify where the player is. So I'm going to say the player is entity 255, just for something to say. And there we go. Now the player is in the level. We have a test level. We're not using most of it, but this will work for the time being. It's, it is, after all, a test level. So I'm just going to save sure to here. Why not? I'll save this as testlevel.png. And there we go, we've created the test level. Simple as that. So, now that we have our test level all sorted out, it's time to do the next thing in our big list of things to do, which is make test graphics. How can we make test graphics? Well, pretty much the same way we made the level with an image editor. So, I'm going to create a new image, it's going to be, I'm going to say our standard size for sprites in this project is going to be 32 by 32. You could make it bigger or smaller, but I think 32 by 32 is a good balance between, well, size and potential quality. So now, how are we going to make our test player? This we're going to do first. We're going to do the player. Well, the first, we need to make, the first thing we need to do to make a player is make a new layer. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to turn off the background layer just for the time being. I'm going to make a pretty simple player. I'm going to say 40% variance with zero saturation and hue, just picking something. He's going to be gray. I'm going, to make, I'm going to make him a circle. A gray circle. And with 60% variance, I'm going to make eyes, which are less small gray circles. And I'm not even going to bother making sure they're properly centered. I'm... that's unusual. I would expect if I used the circle tool for this, it would make a circle. That's... That's odd, I've never had that happen before. There, I've selected... Is it because it's not big enough? Okay, I guess it was just too small. Huh. I've never had it. The circle tool make a perfectly uniform thing, even with just four points like that. Huh. Oh well. I guess I've learned something new. Anyways. So now I'm going to bother making sure they're perfectly centered. Just going to give them two eyes and a big, wide mouth. And make it... <laughs> it's a little low for a mouth. There we go. There's his mouth. We've got our player face. Not the most exciting guy in the world. No. It's something that'll work for the time being. Again, these are all temporary graphics, so testplayer.png. And make sure the background is off when you export. So there we go, we've now created our test player and our test 
level. Now, the final temporary graphic that we need is a wall. Why do we need a wall, you might ask? Because those are the only two things in our test level right now. We have a player, and we have the wall. So we create graphics for those two things. We have graphics for everything in our level. So I'm going to create a new graphic, 32 by 32, same size as the player. I'm going to start by just filling it to white. Just, well, just because, really. Now I'm going to make a brick wall. So first off, we need a brick. So I'm going to make our brick, say, 4 pixels high. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there. You should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in the middle. And therefore, it should be a total of 8 pixels long by 4 pixels high. Why am I making it that particular size? Because both of those numbers divide 32. And so therefore, the bricks will go all the way across evenly, and our texture will tile. And just to make this a little more interesting than black and white bricks, not, not much more interesting, but just a little bit, I'm going to add some basic shading to it. Not a lot, just basic. So I say the center of our brick is 40. I'm going to add lighting and shadow to it. Very basic stuff, again. I'm going to say the light is coming from the top right, so from this way. And if we stick with this convention for everything in our game, well, we'll have consistent lighting throughout the whole game, and therefore it'll look fairly nice. So this part's lit, 60% gray, this part's in shadow, 20% gray, and the corners aren't really either, so they'll be 40% gray. And there we go, we've got a basic temporary brick. It's still not great, again, these are still temporary graphics, but they're a little bit better than just doing, well, nothing. Now I'm going to take this same graphic and I'm gonna offset it by 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So, okay, maybe I'm not. So 1, 2, 3, 4. There. And that way we have that sort of staggered pattern that bricks tend to have. It also means I'm going to need this right here. So there, now we just need to copy and paste these, well, this row of bricks. And there we go. What do you know? We have a brick wall. And it works. So test wall.png. Sure. We are done. We have created all of our temporary graphics. So, the final thing we're going to do in our starting up phase is set up the engine to load and run the level. So, that means we're going to need to use the Dare engine to load our test level with our test player and test wall graphics. So this means, if you haven't done it already, you will need the Dare engine set up so if you haven't done that, go to video 1, click on the time tag linking you to where we set up the Dare engine, and just go from there. If you have, what you want to, go, what you want to do is go to the directory where we have our project in, go to the resource folder, and put our test graphics in there so that, well, we have access to them from the code base. And there. So you might be wondering, how do we load a level? How are we going to write code to do this? And I've actually outlined the basic algorithm right here. For every pixel in our test level image, we're going to separate the four components, because if you remember, well, right here, these are the four components. The red is data index, the green is the flags, and the blue is the entity type, A is unused. We're going to separate those four, and then we're going to pass them to the entity specification. So the entity specification can instantiate, well, whatever entity we have specified for those parameters. And then finally it's going to add that final and resulting entity, whatever entity it created, to the level for us. Now, we don't have an entity specification just yet, so we're going to do some basic hard coding here. It's going to be replaced later, and it's not get that much code anyways, but yeah. So we're going to bypass the entity specification until we actually create it, and just, well, do, do the, the old-fashioned hard code way. So with that, let's go ahead, go into Eclipse, 
and get started. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do before we do anything else is create a new package in our whole project for the game. So I'm going to call this package game. And I'm going to actually move our main class into the game. Sure. And the reason we want to do this is so that this way all the code from our platformer is, well, it's separated from all the code for the derringe. And so that way it just keeps it nice and separated like that, which is kind of nice. Now if I run again, hey look at that, we still have exactly what we had before. So good. I'm also going to divide up our game into, well, two more classes. One class I'm going to call Platform Scene. And what this is going to do is this is going to take on the role that this private test scene class has right now. So it's going to extend scene. There we go. And it's going to have, again, everything that test scene has right now. So I'm going to cut and paste. And we're going to need to rename the constructor because now it's a different class. And there, we sh it should work just fine. Other than the fact that I need to delete this and change this to new platform C. So again, if everything's gone according to plan, that should be that shouldn't change the behavior of the code. It should do, yeah, exactly the same thing. It's just now it's a little more organized, just a little bit more organized. So in our platform C, what do we need to do? Well, we don't need most of this stuff. So. Actually, before I do that, I want one more class. And this is going to be the class called Platform Level. This is going to be responsible for loading the level, as well as managing everything, all the various data associated with the level. Which right now isn't really anything, but, you know, <laughs> it's there for the future. So what does our level need to do? When we load the level, we're going to need to take in what well, we need to know about the platform scene we're going to be adding it. Actually, we don't even need to know about that. We just need to know about the spatial structure we're adding it to. So I'm going to take an I spatial structure of entities. I'm going to call structure. And this is, whoops, from here. There we go. This is all part of the engine. So just control shift O. That'll import it. We need the structure. We're also going to need the sprite sheet factory because we're going to be we call it sprites, and we need this because we're going to be loading sprites. We're going to be loading whatever sprites the level tells us we need for this entity. And there, so I'm just going to take these and I'm going to make them. Whoops, I can copy them. And I'm going to make them well class variables. Private, private the stuff. Make them private because we don't need them anywhere else. And this dot structure equals structure. And this dot sprites equals sprites. And there, I think that's just about all the monkey works. Now we can just say public void load level, and this will um yeah I guess string file name. So this will load a level from a particular file. And then, from there, it will, well, add everything in that level to the spatial structure. And there we go. That should be just about all we need for the monkey work of getting this stuff set up. So, how do we load a level? First thing, we need access to the actual level sprite sheet. Because remember, we're sort of organizing the level as a sprite sheet so it has support for layers. So let's say sprite sheet level, that's going to equal sprites.get file name. Now we need the number of sprites per x and sprites per y. I'm just going to say that's one with no border. And we're going to say i render, we're not going to render this, I'm going to say i render device filter nearest. If I can import that. There we go. 
Oh right, that, that's C++ syntax, not Java syntax. Excuse me. And this will, this does mean we're going to have to potentially throw an IO exception because we're loading stuff. But that's okay, we're just going to throw it. And there, so now we have access to the level. So what I'm going to say here, now that we have a sprite, well now that we've, in theory, loaded the sprite sheet representing the level, I'm going to say level.getSheet. This gets me the raw data of the sprite sheet. And I'm going to say get pixels. And this will give me pretty much raw access to, well, the level data. There we go. So now we have raw access to the level data. And what I really want to do here is I want to go through every pixel, just about, Well, just like the algorithm says, I'm going to go through every pixel, separate the four components, pass them as parameters. So, for, I'm going to say int layer equals zero. Layer is less than level dot get sprite. Get num sprites layer plus plus. So, each quote unquote sprite in the level is going to be one layer of the level. And then we're going to do another loop here. We're going to say for int j equals zero. j is less than level dot get sprite height. j plus plus. And for i equals zero. i is less than level dot get sprite width. i plus plus. So this should be taking us through every single pixel in the level without fail. Now, to get the right pixel, we're going to need the x and y coordinate. Because if I look at level data methods, we have, well, that's what the get methods use. It uses x and y location. So I'm going to have an integer that I'm going to call x, and this is going to be equal to level dot get start x for the, our current layer, and then I'm going to add i to that. So this way, it takes care of whatever issues we may have with how the sprite sheet's laid out. And same thing for y, level.getStart y plus j. And there we go. Now I just need int pixel equals level.get, excuse me, level data.get at x and y. Simple as that. So now, next thing, now that we have well, now that we're getting every single pixel on the level, we're going to need to separate it into its components. So that's, well, R, G, B, and A. And the way we do this, actually, the pixel is stored in A, R, G, B format. What we can do is we can use the color class, and you, we can use H, S, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, first of all, let me import the correct color class. Import engine dot rendering dot color. There. Now I should be able to use the right color class. Because I want, this is what I'm looking for. Get ARGB component. And R is component 1 because, well, it's the R. G and B, components 2 and 3. And A, well, that's the very first component, so the component 0. And now we have RGB and A. Now I'm going to create a private method that I'm going to call load entity. This is going to take an int R, int G, int B, int A. And what I'm really going to do here is just going to say load entity RGBA. And there we go, We're, we load the entity for every pixel in the level? What do you know? <laughs> Simple as that. Now we just need to implement this load entity method, and we're pretty much done with loading the level. It's really... this isn't that bad. Now, I just realized that get ARGB component in the color class 
returns a byte instead of an integer, which is what it should return. Now, I'm going to fix this in future versions of the Dare Engine, but if you're following along with an older version of the Dare Engine where it hasn't been fixed, here's how to do it. We're going to take the byte, change it to an integer, obviously. And the one place where this needs changing or fixing in the Dare Engine is an OpenGL render device in this byte buffer make RGBA buffer method. All you want to do is just cast all these color get ARGB component things to bytes, and you're done. So that's how to fix it if it's not already fixed. And with that, we can now move on. So now we can implement the load entity function. I just realized that we actually need to pass in X and Y in here as well, so that we know where to create the entity. So let's start simple. How do we create an entity in the Dare engine? Well, if you look in platform scene, we have example code for that. So I'm actually going to copy the, this code right here, where we create a new entity. As you see, we start by creating an entity with the structure, which we have access to here in the level. So I'll pass in structure. You know, it's one of the class variables. And we also need to, well, then we need to just, bleh. <laughs> then we need to add all the components. And for the time being, I'm, well, we might need those actually, but let me, the big thing I want to focus on here is the sprite components. So I'm going to add a throws declaration here, because we're going to need that, because we're potentially loading stuff. So let's start simple. How do we determine where the entity is? Because we've got structure, X position, Y position, Z position. And first we need to know how wide an entity is. So I'll create float entity width. We start out equal to 1.0 just temporarily. And entity height. Which again, I'm going to start off equal to 1.0. Because we're going to need to do a little bit of math to figure this out. But right now, our display is 640 by 480. And our sprites are 32 by 32. So do the math. We can fit 20 sprites on X and 15 sprites on Y. But in the Dare engine, two units is the total width of the screen. So if I want 20 sprites on X, then each sprite has to be 0.1 wide. And similarly, if I want 15 sprites on Y, then 0.133 repeating is going to be how, have to be how tall the sprites are. So yeah, a little bit of mathematics there. And eventually we're going to automate this so it, well, works properly in all cases. But yeah. So 0.1f and 0.33 repeating f, we are done. So now to find the x and y, to find the x and y location of the entity, we're going to want to take the pixel x times entity width. The height times y. And we're also going to want to do this for sprite component, because you notice we're taking in width and height there. So I'm going to pass in entity width and entity height. It takes these in as doubles, doesn't it? It does. So I'm actually going to change these to doubles. So there. And there we go. So we're creating the proper sprite component, proper entity, all we have, well, almost, we still need the proper sprite, which is determined by B. So here's how I'm going to do this. Since right now we have a convention where if B equals zero, it's nothing, so I'm just going to return, if that's the case. And other than that, if B equals one, then it's the wall. So I'm going to say, how about this, string sprite name. We we'll start off equal to null. If B equals 1, then our sprite name is testwall.png, which if we look in our resource folder, exactly what it's called. Otherwise, if B equals 255, then this is the player. So our sprite name equals testplayer.png. And, oops, wrong one, if you look again, 
That's the name of this. So we're doing quite a bit of hard coding here. Again, this is temporary. Eventually we're going to have an entity specification which does all this automatically. But yeah, red and alpha are currently ignored, so for green, I'm going to have, well really, right here. If green is greater than or equal to 128, then we're blocking, because that's our that's what we said. So if that's the case, we're going to add a collider and a collision component so that this is blocking. And with that, I think we're pretty much done with our basic entity loader. It's a little hackish, admittedly, but there. One thing, though. If we build and run right now, we're not going to see anything for two reasons. One, we're not using this class at all. And two, even if we were, right now, in our platform scene render class, we're rendering this range negative two to two, which is... It, it's not exactly where... We want our screen centered around the player. So to do that, I'm going to have a private entity player. And then what I'm going to do here is, well, pretty simple. Actually, to make this even easier, I'm going to move this code around a bit. Right here, I'm going to say, if b equals 255, then player equals e. So that way, now we have a reference to the player. I'm going to start off with player equals no. And I'm going, to, I'm going to create a function, public entity, get player, which, which just returns the player. Simple as that. And in platform scene, now we can use that to render things properly. So let's just get rid of everything up to where we create the sprite factory. So now I'm going to want a platform level. I'm going to call level. New plat... There. No, platform level. And it's going to take in get structure, because we have access to that here. And it's going to take in sprites. So there, we have access to the level. Now we want level.load level. We're going to load test level.png. And, oh, I didn't use sprite name. So I'm going to go back here and replace that with sprite name in platform level, right there. So there you go. And now we should be loading the level, even if. All right. We also want to get rid of all this, these member variables, because we're not using them. So for update, we're just going to simplify to just update in that range for the time being. Actually, how about this? Hey, first off, we're going to want to get the player after this. So level dot get player. Say entity player. Because again, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get this rendering to be sort of based around the player. And to do that, we need to know where the player is. So I'm going to say player.getx. In fact, yeah, I could just make it player class variable. So private entity player. Player equals level dot get player. Simple as that. Okay, updating we don't care about right now. R rendering we do. So player.getx and player.gety. And I'm going to subtract 1.0 from it. Because I think in theory that should, well, sort of put the player at the center of the screen. And I can get rid of this double up get y thing for now. If we build and run, we're going to get a ton of warnings. So let's just import. And, yeah, import, and import, and we should be pretty much ready to go, so let's get ready to test. And there are actually just a few small things I've missed, and we're going to have to change. First off, in load entity, we don't want to pass in X and Y here. We want to pass in I and J. Why? Because I and J are the location of our current level tile in the current layer. 
which is what we want. X and Y are the location of the, the pixel of the level inside the level image file. Right now it's okay because we don't have layers, but later on that would cause a big problem. So yeah, we just want the location of the level inside, well, the whole tile thing, not or inside the layer, not inside the image file. Next, when we load our entity, we actually want to pass in negative entity height times y. Why? Because in an image file, as y increases, the pixel actually gets closer to the bottom of the screen. Whereas in the Dare engine, it's the exact opposite. As y increases, it goes towards the top of the screen. So just invert the entity height, that fixes it, problem solved. But at least when you're creating the entity. Finally, in platform scene, we actually want to get rid of this lighting code here. It doesn't actually hurt anything to have that lighting code there. It just sort of... It just makes everything really dark because we don't have any lights in it yet. And we actually don't need that negative one. I was wrong. Because I forgot, I changed render range so that the viewport X and viewport Y specifies where the center of the screen is. Not where... I don't know. <laughs> not like some corner of it. So if we want the player in the center, we just pass in the player X and player Y, and it's in the center. So now if I run, look at that. We have our test level. You notice everything in the same pattern, the sort of same shape and everything, just like our, well, <laughs> just as we specified in the test level. So everything is working. It's not the most interesting scene in the world, no, but hey, it works. And I dare say with that, we have set up, if we look in our big list of things, not that one, this one, that's all we want to do in our startup. We want to make the test level, make test graphics, and set up the engine to load and run a level. And what do you know, we are loading and running a level. We don't have any interesting behavior yet, but we're going to get there. So thank you. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and in the next video, we are going to start maybe making some interesting things happen with this. Maybe doing a little bit more than just, well, making something so show up on the screen. Thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.